being able to communicate in chemistry using symbols and formulas and equations is important, but sometimes we want to be able to visualize what's happening in a chemical reaction. And in order to do that, we commonly use what are called particulate diagrams. Now in a particulate diagram, we use symbols to represent the different individual pieces of a material. And, and the two most common types of particles that we might have are atoms, which would be just a single type of, of particle, and uh, molecules, which would be uh, different types of atoms that are chemically bound together, and that's usually illustrated by having them physically touching each other, whatever the symbols are. So before you can draw a particulate diagram, you first need to choose and define your symbols. Now you, you've really got a multitude of choices. It's really up to the individual that's making the particulate diagram. Uh, you could use different shapes, different geometric shapes. You could use uh, circles or dots. That, that's kind of the common one that's used. Um, and if you have the capability, you can differentiate them by using different colors to tell one type of uh, atom from another. If you don't have the ability uh, to do colors, you could just stick with black and white, do uh, closed circles, open circles, and if you needed a third one, you could do uh, an open circle with an X in it. But whatever you do, um, choose a symbol, stick with it, and make sure that you define what each of those symbols represents in terms of, you know, if there's a particular species that you're talking about, an element or an ion. When we draw a particulate diagram for something that's an element, an element is made up of only one type of atom. And so in our particulate diagram, we would see only one symbol, one single symbol, not connected to anything else. Um, and, and it's consistent throughout, right, the same type. In the particulate diagram for a compound, we see groups of atoms uh, that are chemically bound together. And the way that that is usually represented is the symbols are physically touching. And that's understood to be uh, a chemical bond. So a compound would be represented by several particles that are all the same type, but they're each made up of multiple atoms of different types that are chemically bound together. A mixture is something that has a varied composition. Elements and compounds are, have a fixed composition. They can't change without changing the identity. Um, a mixture is going to be uh, something that um, can be heavy on one component, lighter on the other, and in another circumstance, uh, the proportions might change. So when we uh, draw a mixture uh, in terms of a particulate diagram, what we're going to see are different types of particles. In the, in the first example here, we have a mixture of elements. So what we see are lots of different atoms, because they're single symbols, but they're different. And so that's what qualifies it as a mixture. If we have a mixture of compounds, then we're going to see different uh, compound symbols. Um, but again, you know, the, the exact um, makeup could change. Finally, we could also have a mixture of elements and compounds in which our particles are going to be a mix of the single atom symbols as well as the uh, different types of atoms that are chemically bound together to form molecules. For elements that are just a single type of atom, there is a special case where you might have a molecular element, say with your diatomics, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. And so what you would have there are uh, the same symbol, but just like within molecules, uh, they are touching each other, so they are chemically bound together. When tasked with drawing a, a particulate diagram, it's important to choose your symbols, make sure that you define your symbols, and then as you are drawing the diagram, remember uh, to illustrate chemical bonds by having your symbols touching each other. Um, and if it's a mixture, you're going to have different types of particles. If it's a pure substance like an element or a compound, you'll have just one single type of particles shown.